Welcome to the Bodmin Viewing, and this is episode 5 of Play On, the laid back section of the Bodmin Viewing where we pick out a football topic to discuss that hopefully you'll enjoy. And today's topic is on the governor, Paul Ince, and the time he spent in Italy with Inter Milan. So to kick things off, let's look at what was going on with Paul Ince before he moved to the San Siro in 1995, and what ultimately prompted the move to begin with. Ince at the time was seen as one of the best midfielders in the Premier League, with his aggressive style of play and passing range. He played a massive role in helping Manchester United enjoy huge success in the early 90s. During his time at United, however, Ince had somewhat of a frosty relationship with his manager Sir Alex Ferguson, with numerous bust-ups being reported between the pair and Ferguson famously calling Ince a big-time Charlie on occasion. By early 1995, the relationship was beginning to fray, and with young hot prospects now at United looking for first-team football, it seemed only a matter of time before things were going to come to an end. By the summer of 1995, Ince had won 10 major trophies in his 6 years at Manchester United, and was in the process of trying to negotiate a new 4 year contract at the club. However, during a round of golf with teammate Ryan Giggs, Ince got a phone call from Sir Alex Ferguson, telling him to meet him at the clubhouse that day for a serious discussion. It was at this point he was told that the club had accepted an offer from Inter Milan of around £7.5 million, and that he was allowed to leave with immediate effect. Albeit shocked by the news, Ince was then met by Inter Milan owner Massimo Moratti, who explained to him that he'd been a long-time admirer of his style of play and would do everything he could to help Ince and his family settle in Italy. After being given this reassurance on the move, the contract was signed and Paul Ince was on his way to play in Serie A. Ince arrived in Italy at the beginning of the 95-96 season as one of Inter Milan's newest star signings, alongside Javier Zanetti and Roberto Carlos, and they were looking to help their new club win their first domestic trophy since 1989. The Serie A at this time was widely regarded as the best league in world football, with the likes of George Weah, Del Piero and Batistuta being standout performers just to name a few, alongside England internationals David Platt and Paul Gascoigne. With this level of competition around them, coupled with learning a new language at the same time, Ince was challenged with being able to hit the ground running right away and try to make a big impact for his new club quickly, and he didn't disappoint. Ince immediately became a fan's favourite, as in his first Milan derby that ended in a 1-1 draw, it was his performance going up against a strong Milan side that stood out and got the fans singing his name. Even though Ince was played out of position many times in his first season, he helped his side secure a respectable 7th place finish in the league and qualification for the UEFA Cup. It does however also need to be mentioned at this time, whilst playing in Italy, Paul Ince had to endure terrible racist attacks and chanting across the country whilst representing his new club. During this era, it wasn't uncommon to see racist graffiti outside the stadiums or players being abused from the stands, and Ince showed an unrelenting strength and character to not allow this to affect him and still perform at the highest level. He's even been quoted in the situation recently as saying, it wasn't something that was going to deter me from what my mission was at Inter. Going into his second season with Inter, there had been a few managerial changes, and the arrival of a certain Roy Hodgson would prove to be great news for Ince. Ahead of the 96-97 season, Hodgson grew criticism by selling Roberto Carlos to Real Madrid, but his new signings of Zhorkaev and Zamorano would prove to be successful and the club would see an upturn in form. Ince was now being played in his favoured central midfield position and would flourish in that role, scoring 10 goals in all competitions and was named as the fans player of the year. Inter would finish third in Serie A that year and also go on a memorable UEFA Cup run, making it all the way to the final where they unfortunately just lost out to Schalke on penalties. By this point Inter were a club on the rise, and the owner Moratti still saw Ince as being a big part of any future success they were going to have. So much so, after breaking the world record transfer fee to sign Ronaldo for the 97-98 season, he immediately went to Ince and offered him a new and improved 5 year deal to keep him at the club. Unfortunately, Ince would have to disappoint Moratti and the Inter fans that adored him and request a move back to England due to family reasons. Liverpool put a transfer bid in for Ince that was accepted and allowed him and his family to move back to the UK to continue his playing career. In the two years he played for Inter Milan, Ince made 73 appearances and scored 13 goals, and was idolised by the Inter fans during that time due to his commitment to the club and the passion he showed on the pitch. Ince has since mentioned that he regrets leaving Inter when he did, but there can be no doubt he will always be held in the highest regard by the Nerazzurri. Alright, well that's our take on Paul Ince at Inter Milan. We hope you enjoyed the video and give us your feedback in the comments section or if there's another football topic you want covered. Whilst you're here, you should check out our other videos on the channel and if you could thumbs this one up, that'd be great, it really helps. 
subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.